Takashi Ueno has a penchant for old things. A vintage Ferrari, and in particular, mechanical gears and wheels. It took a while for him to reveal it. But here is the truth. I am digital camera creator, so I can't say officially, so I don't like digital camera. I shouldn't say so. The attraction of film camera is totally different from digital. Mechanical gears reflect developers' uh, ideas or uh, philosophy. Mechanical gears have a uh, functional beauty, designs and uh, feeling and shutter sound. All of these uh, items in love. But digital camera, mm, I'm not in love. Of course, I like digital camera, but not in love. If you thought that confession was shocking, meet Kunio Aoyama, the rebel. Second of triplets to emerge from his mother's womb, and a man who swears by his wife's drip coffee every morning. Kunio almost joined a car company. But something genius that day swayed his decision to Fujifilm. That changed the X series forever. Sometimes the foreigner uh, call me a kind of samurai or so, but uh, for me, the samurai is a uh, kind of the officer. Eh? Both say do or something and just follow him. This is a samurai, not a strong person. Typical officer, employee, of the, uh, employee for the shogun or so, not radical guys. I don't want to be samurai. Such an employee. Boring. I use my boss, use him for myself. But if we cannot share our vision, I don't do. Toshi Hisa Ida is Kunio's boss. A man devoted to one wife, one daughter, and one company. I probably married with Fuji. So. <laughs> Yes, uh, maybe I work, so hard, work, work too hard, maybe. Yeah. I'm not the boss who are uh, ordering or uh, telling what to do. I give more uh, flexibility or freedom to my staff. They're thinking hard what they should do. Uh, but the most important thing is, you know, the set the common goal. That's very important. So what to do is very clear. I will set up the goal, which is uh, what to do. So how to do is I give, I leave my stuff. Uh, I trust myself. Uh, they can achieve individual goal, I think. Yuichi Fujimura. He has spent months refining the push and feel of the new trigger. For my preference, he reduced its depth by two millimeters. Eh, 
決めますそしてそれに、えっと、こういったあの操作部材ダイヤルとかボタンとかを設計して操作できるようにしてそれを全部くるむ、えっと、外装、えっと、エクステリア外装を設計する仕事をしていますこのシャッターボタンの感触を良くするっていうことに結構あのプロ2からの改善を入れているので、まあ、ここの、まあ、やっぱ写真を撮るっていう一番の入り口であるこのシャッターボタンの感触っていうのを今回は、えっと、すごい素敵な感触にしようとして今あの開発しています。今回のカメラは、まあ、持った瞬間にそういうショックが、まあ、得られるんじゃないかなと思って頑張ってます。Who am I? My name is Mindy Tan. I am an ex photographer. In the marketing world, sometimes we call them as、uh, XC's ambassador or as a photographer to show Fujifilm quality to the market. But I think ex photographers are more than that. I think ex photographers, especially through their photograph, they show camera concept or camera spirit. The team at Fujifilm have granted me special access into their lives and their work. I am the insider, the photographer privileged enough to ask classified questions. そう鏡開きをこれやったらですね、えー、この鏡を破る、えー、一眼レフが持っていた鏡がですねミラーレスでなくなるというこういう意味を込めておりますのでよろしくお願いします13 March 2019 20 cameras 39 lenses 250 firmware updates and counting Omiya is where Fujifilm's X series cameras come together. From drawing board to mass production, the Expo tree shall be expected in a year. After last night's round of highballs and e d a m a m e the people from the bar are in the office. Sharp as tack, on time. Today is the finalization meeting. Today is crunch time. We call the、uh, decision making meeting、uh, for、uh, product development. My role is general manager for optical device and electronic imaging products division. A bit wrong. My first name is wrong and my division name is wrong.、Uh, OD means optical device. Optical device is、uh, uh, we are. Manufacturing and、uh, supplying all kinds of industrial lenses,、uh, including the broadcast lens,、uh, cine lens,、uh, security lens, projector lens,、uh, even the automotive lenses.、Uh, that is、uh, all included in the optical device、uh, divisions.、Uh, used to be the Fujinon, it's a separate company, but you know, we now merged、uh, into together. And、uh, electronic imaging is uh, uh, our X series on the GFX. And、uh, the lens division. Basically, you know, two umbrellas. One is for the camera divisions,、uh, the other one for lens division. This meeting was particularly for X Pro 3.、Uh, so we discussed everything, including product design, features, manufacturing place, the financial models, and、uh, the intensively discussed uh, about uh, the colors. So now, X Pro 3, we decided to go. For go with、uh, three colors. So, all, all kinds of the, the things discussed、uh, with all responsible people,、uh, from, not only from the marketing, but also from RD, manufacturing side, quality assurance side. So, so all, everybody discussed and everybody get the consensus, make go for Express 3. The manufacturing side responsible for the quality and、uh, the cost, as well as you know, all the product designer. Wants to have a you know, beautiful product, but uh, uh, sometimes you know,、uh, we need to get the right balance between the,、uh, the cost, the design, the features. The consensus is、uh, very important for m a k e any project、uh, happen successfully. So I think that without consensus,、uh, we don't get a you know, good result. It's not compromise, but you know, consensus is very important. In 2006 or 2007, the smartphone. Uh, launched to the market. 
And we think in the near future, people we don't need uh, point and shoot camera. So we have to change our camera lineup from entry level digital camera to high end professional camera. If we don't solve, maybe we have to keep our business. We entered to high-end camera market last among the old digital camera brands. There is no camera in the world which has traditional design. So I decided to make x rays traditional style camera. The word of X usually including uh, unknown or experimental. We want to develop very impressive camera that uh, other companies don't have. I am a product planner of X Pro 3. I am joining this project, especially the first draft idea and organizing the team and producing the developing and the delivery and everything. Uh, I have responsible for the XT3 and the XH1, also about the entry cameras like uh, XA5 and uh, XT100. I'm in charge of every GFX system cameras like 50S, 50L, and one more 100 megapixel budget. And also the like middle range of the X series like XT30, XE3 and or as a compact X100 and so on. My, my image, the job of the product planning is like a conductor of the orchestra. I have a, a new idea, I share the, the idea, then I co conduct to our teammate. Yeah, we are a member of the product planning team. So we decide any kind of concept target users and also the price point and any specifications features and to discuss with the uh, RMD team. So we have a mm. weekly meeting and also uh, regularly uh, we have a product meeting, a product decision maker meeting. Each product planner uh, presented their own product. So what for XTCs, what for GFX series, mm. what for Pro series? Because uh, we have totally different product. So I think the three of us is like a, like a brothers, like a family, because we have the parents, the bosses. Sometimes uh, I feel uh, this way about us, like uh, the, the friends in the uh, battlefield. We have a um, difficult situation. I respect and uh, I trust mm. to, to guide. So my feeling mm. we can win mm. uh, this so difficult situation. Mm. So this relationship is uh, very important for me. Yeah. Oh yes. Mm. Mm. It's a better expression, mm. like army. Mm. <laughs> so we have a mission. <laughs> or yeah. maybe some, some sports team. Mm. Mm. It's very serious. Mm. So now we are standing at the, you know, like a championship in the world. Everybody has their own opinions, but uh, what our aim is saying to win. <laughs> I, I can see Kunil, the behind the Explorer, but and also the photographers as well. And Kunio mm -hmm. always talking with them. Mm -hmm. Kunio is always standing between Xpro and photographers. My Makoto's product, X100, is like uh, the brother talented uh, musical instrument. But for me, X100 is a very artist, actor, or something. Strong, passion, and uh, this is the only one product in, in the world, DSX uh, 100, and he has uh, very co confident about the quality, image quality, and uh, he, he, he has many knowledge about the photography and technology. Yeah, actually, he started the XT series. Yeah. Mm. So he is a product planner of the XT1, T2, T3. I can see the June, the backside of the XT. I, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> I know XT and I know June. So it's always the same. <laughs> he is the silent person. 
but very strong person. He has a confident to his decision. Before XT series, we just have a range finder style camera. Nobody has any doubt uh, such a decision. But uh, he is thinking, uh, why just we only make range finder style camera? Mm. So he started <coughs> um, practical. Um. So Jim, uh, the XT series is very educated. Educate brother, like uh, MIT or uh, like Harvard or some, everything he can do. I get jealous. So, uh, like an artist, like a yeah, intelligent artist, genius. So, what, what I, I should do? This is my question. This is my mission. In a nutshell, Jun Watanabe, Makoto Oishi, and Kunio Aoyama are the three musketeers leading the creation of Fujifilm's X series cameras. 2019 is Kunio's year. The man in charge of producing events now leads the concept behind the Expo 3, the rangefinder series that defines the Fujifilm brand. シリーズの始まりはレンズ交換式で言うとエクスプロ1 え、道行く人が気づいてしまったり、そこで自然な、ま、写真って撮れなくなってしまう。なので、ま、街中に溶け込むこと、ま、ま、
で、まあ、一番こだわったのはあのダイヤルオペーションなんですけれども、まあ、たとえダイヤルを見なくとも慣れれば手の感覚だけで操作できるようなそういった形レイアウトを工夫しました、まあ、そうしたことで対象物から目を離さずにカメラを構えることなくカメラの設定ができるようになると考えましたまあまごまごして人から注目されたりとかあと構える時間が長いとあの人から気づかれてしまうので、まあ、そうしたことをできるだけ避けるためにそうした仕様を考えました My story started seven years ago. So at the time, I was in charge of the marketing to sell more X-Pro1. So my X-Pro1 was the first model of X-Series. The sales result was not so positive, unfortunately. There were so many problems. It had the big potential, but it was still potential. The perfection was quite low level. Autofocus was very slow, but At that time, I believe I love X Pro series. Sales was not so good, but I believe the potential can be realized. The body size of mirrorless camera is very small, but we have to to the finder in case of range finder style、uh, mirrorless camera. We have to install very big opal glass to the small body, so it's very difficult. X Pro series have to install very Complicated、uh, some system and the parts. That's the reason X Pro series price a little bit high. So, compared to XT series, we want to create a camera which can use without manual when the people firstly buy our X series camera. Of course, as I already said, I prefer analog camera、uh, compared to digital camera. But this age, Is digital age, so I can't develop film camera anymore. But of course, I can I can create digital camera like analog camera. At that time, I wanted to unveil the potential of X Pro line from X Pro 1 to X Pro 2, four years. And during these four years, I became friends with many X photographers, and many X photographers taught me I love X Pro 1. That was very, very troublesome camera, but still I love. So, this is my motivation. I think this is my mission. So, that is the reason to raise my hand to be product brand of X Pro 2. Then... まあ、X Pro シリーズは本当に、まあ、特に、まあ、僕が関わったの X Pro 2があのかなり、本当に全身全霊を込めて。それから僕の持てるカメラの知識写真の知識デザイナーのスキル、まあ、全てを、えー、込めてデザインしたのが X プロ2ですでそれができた時に僕と、えー、企画の上野さんと2人で、まあ、青山さんもそうですけどあのやっと納得できるカメラができたねっていうふうに、まあ、喜びあったんですね。でそれぐらい、まあ、僕らが自信を持って作れたのが X プロ2だっったと思ってますちょっとおかしな話ですけど僕も上野さんも銀塩カメラが大好きだったんですねでどっかで銀塩カメラとデジタルカメラって、うん、違いがあってでその時までは銀塩カメラが。まあ、本当のカメラでデジタルカメラってちょっと違うものだよねみたいのがあったんですけど、まあ、それがなくなったのがなくなったような気がちょっとしましたね。And then three years has passed, the time of X Pro3 has come.It is November 2018, exactly a year to the official release of the X Pro3. Serious discussions are taking place in Omiya. In 12 record breaking months, as the team works its way from concept brainstorming to 3D mock up and finally to a mass production stage, this imaginary camera shall be in the hands of photographers, most particularly street photographers.
So I hope that uh, the next Expo 3 will be without button. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what I told them. Okay, no button, no screen, nothing, nothing. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> Uh, during this meeting in Japan, it was uh, wonderful, it was amazing, and, uh, with an uh, engineer and designer, and uh, it was a pleasure to... Uh, how could I imagine me, a French little photographer, to be invited by uh, Fuji in Japan, and uh, in a very nice place in Forest, a wonderful hotel, very simple, but very, you know, as a design in Japan, as in how to do simple things with quality, you know. And um, it was just fabulous. Two days of brainstorming with all these people. How could I imagine me, Eric Bouvet, could, uh, to be a, a very, really very little part of uh, the next Expo 3? I was very, very uh, happy. I enjoyed it and I was a little bit proud about that. I'm pretty sure that they will not keep not so much about all my uh, what I'm expecting to, but so anyway, so I have a, a little advice about what we need and what we love, and they must give to the photographers the camera who helps them to do better pictures. When you have a camera in your hand, it's something, it's a precious. Uh, if you love your camera, you will do better picture, definitely. Okay, I can do a, uh, a picture with a, a smartphone or with a lot of different cameras, okay. But if you have a nice camera, a camera you love it, and the lens you love it, you f it's logical, it's a way, you will do better. It's a prolongation of your arm, and your hand, your arm, and uh, your eyes, your soul. You know, it's for example, uh, it's what means photography? In Greek means uh, uh, writing with a light, photography. It's writing with the light, okay? In French, a camera, it's appareil. Appareil means préparer, to prepare in Latin. It's preparing your photography, you know? We are in a logical way, you know? So, so this camera, if it's a nice one, it's a wonderful one, it's a camera, you love it, of course you will do better picture. You have no choice. Meaning, beginning phase, so I have three ideas. To change the finder and to change exterior material and uh, install a tiltable LCD. But uh, at the beginning phase, I didn't have idea uh, to install a sub-LCD here. Original idea is here. Through a long, long interview to ex-photographers, my ex-photographers requested me, please install the indicator of how many shots can this camera do, like a film indicator. So we try to install this here, but uh, there is no uh, such a uh, LCD parts. Now somebody uh, of the R&D team uh, show me the, the color device, again this size, but it shows the uh, color information. At the timing, I got the idea. Wow, the size is same as film package. I asked him, can you install here? Try. So that's the story of end of last year. 28th of December, 28th of December, and 29th, last working day of last year, at the last day, he showed me, kuno -san. it can be realized. That is the story. You know, Matagashi and I loved classical bicycle, uh, made of the stainless, made of the chrome molybden. For such a guy, a titanium is a dream material. Several times we tried to use titanium, now is the timing. Titanium uh, is a very, very uh, functional material, very strong, very durable, and very stable. Last, last year, we got the connection to the factory to realize a special coating for titanium. This is also one of the reasons to choose titanium. So because we want to prepare very special material for my lovely Expo. These 10 years or 20 years, among digital camera, just one or two model choose titanium, but it was a compact camera, not for professional camera and uh, such uh, interchangeable camera. Our lovely X Pro needs special body like armor for the fighter. Finder to take it, 
ファインダーを覗くことに没頭して撮影してほしいっていうメッセージがこれはもう企画の段階からあったんですけどがあります。やっぱりこう一回こう撮ってみて撮ってみてってやると一回外の空間というか分断されてしまうので撮影体験がそれをもうずっとこう没入するっていうことが新しい。デジタルカメラとしては新しいのかなと。携帯で日常的にこう撮影するのとは違って、X シリーズで撮影する体験ってやっぱりこう一回撮影者側のスイッチをオンする意味でもこうファインダーをしっかり覗いて被写体と向き合ってほしい。そういう意味でまあこの質問なんだっけ。We had so many struggles internally and actually some of my salesperson challenged us several times at the product meeting or sales meeting. They also understand it is very cool but not so popular. But after the meeting at the bar over the beer, honestly speaking, you don't like this camera? Personally, I love it. I, I, I did not change my mind. So I think that from the point of the view of マーケティング、we couldn't make this decision, but this is a product of hobby, no logic from heart. I had to make the decision. That's the reason. If personally they don't like this idea, I might not choose this choice. But the most of my colleagues love it personally. X Pro3 is not tribute to analog camera,、uh, just new camera with respect. To analog camera,、mm. because now digital camera age, forget、uh, the passion of the photography. Analog camera era, most of users、uh, doesn't matter the specs. Most of users care about the feeling, my passion to the shooting. So what I mean, the respect is、uh, to recover the、uh, passion of the photography, take back the passion to digital camera. My approach is a、uh, fusion digital and analog. 一番はやっぱりあのユーザー写真家さんなりユーザーがやっぱこうも持ちたい撮りたいっていうカメラを作りたいただ今回の X プロ3はそれに加えてやっぱりこう置いておいて見たい飾りたいっていうそういうカメラを目指すっていうところが一番あの目指しているところになります。実用性のある道具アウトドア用品とかあとは、まあ、ナイフや拳銃みたいなそういうストイックな道具の持つ、えー、雰囲気とか、まあ、ある意味色気オーラみたいなものをプロ3にもまとわせたいと思ってデザインしました製品デザインって仕様があって制約があってでユーザーがいて結構もう決まってることが多いのでまあ論理的にこうデザインは決まってきちゃうんですけどどこかにこうひらめき的なものを入れたくなってしまう<笑>まそれは機種によって違いますけどあとはまあ感覚的にまあそういう数値とか論理的に説明できない感覚的に美しいとかいいなと思う部分を入れたいなと思うのが思います。私個人的には男性女性ではアウトプットはそんな変わらないと思っていてで変わるもしそこに違いがあるなら個性その人の個性だと思ってますでただ私自身はそのデザインする時にこう感覚的に感性でデザインしてしまうのでそれを男性に伝えるときは開発メンバー男性が多いので伝えるときはできるだけこう論理的に伝えるようにデザインを説明するようにしています、えー、企画者と一緒にあのカメラの企画を考えるところからコンセプトを考えるところから、えー、まあ、それに合った使い方とかまあ、外観のデザインまで含めて、えー考えていきますで、まあ、見た目だけじゃなくて、まあ、持ちやすさとか、えーまあ、取り回しの良さとかまで考えてデザインを
していますで最終的には、えー、設計者と企画者とデザイナーで、えー、一緒にこう一つのカメラを作っていくことをやっています開発の中で一回こう目標となるデザインをモックアップを作るタイミングがあるんですけど、まあ、そこに向けて一つ目指すべき形ができてでそれはもう見た目だけなんで動かないんですけどでみんなでこれがいいねってなってからもう外装エレキソフトウェアいろんな人が協力して今ちょうどこう動く試作機ができてきてるんですね同じ形で。今まさにこの出来上がってきたものをみんなで触って実際製品になるのがこう垣間見れるっていうのかな多分プロダクトデザインナーでしかなかなか味わえないこの自分が描いた形が実際こう動くものになってできてくるでさらにそれで写真が撮れるっていうふうにこうどんどんこう変わっていくというか成長していくっていうかなんかこう。製品に近づいていてくまさに今なんですけどそれはすごくワクワクしますあと、えー、商品企画やデザイナーは抽象的なイメージで我々に伝えてきますでそれをいかに、まあ、量産できるたくさん作れるカメラにするかっていうのを、えっと、設計しなきゃいけないのがすごい大変です。一生懸命すごい小さく軽くしてもみんなに見せるとまだ重いもっと軽くしろもっと感触をよくしろもっとかっこよくしろって言われるとやっぱり、えー、一生懸命やってもやっぱり、えー、一生懸命検討してすごい小さくしてもまだ足りないまだ足りないって言われるとやっぱりこうそういうのが大変ですやっぱり。まあ、デ,デザインとのやり取りや、えっと、中のデバイスの制約とかで、えー、それをうまくまとめ上げるのがすごい難しい大変な仕事です目標の、えー、品質、えー、コストと日程を達成するために仕様の実現検討、えー、あとは開発日程の立案あとは試作等を、えー、推進しますいろいろな問題が発生するしますが、まあ、それをしっかり解決して、まあ、あの目標の日程で、えーまあ、上してる、まあ、発売するというところですね、はい。中はよくはないけどもやっぱりいいものを作るにはお互いこう「なあなあ」っていう日本語がどうなんだろうお互いえっと、妥協し合ってはやっぱりいいものはできないのでそこはお互い本当に欲しいものを作りたいものを、えっと、ディスカッションして議論して作っていかないといけないので仲良くはないけど嫌いではないです。It was never a program deliberately created by Fujifilm. I remember initially when I first got it, I was so thrilled about the X100. I got, I got it like the week it came out in Canada. The first few days,、uh, it was like a foreign object. I, and I actually thought, okay, what?、Hmm, maybe I made a mistake here. Maybe once I got past that, obviously everything changed. I got into the Fujifilm cameras, and the cameras gave me this, this incentive to start telling stories and doing visual essays. And it was a very, I'm looking for the right word here, it's not frenzied, it's a very bullion era when those cameras came on the scene, and everyone was, you know, there's this huge community basically created overnight around those,、uh, those things. And so I, I started having conversations with photographers online of creating stories and visual essays. Well, Fuji had come out with this. New camera, like in, I think they came out with the X100 series, the very first one in 2011. You know, the, the question was where does it fit in the market? And nobody was sure. It looked really cool because it looked like an old camera. It was kind of, what do you use it for? And then the Pro 1 came in 2012. First interchangeable lens body came out with a good old 
35 right here, straight from 2012. And I think the 18 as well. Then it was suddenly a camera with a little more flexibility. I think Fuji were just intrigued by the people who used it in a commercial setting. I bought my X-Pro1. There's no Thor or not even Fuji here in the Philippines. So I need to buy it online. So I only play with the JPEG and I'm so happy with the output of that camera. Then that's the time I keep on posting on my Facebook. So after a week or two, and then somebody emailed me. It's from Tokyo. Can we use your images on our upcoming website? I said yes. They would later invite four other photographers to Japan. Fujifilm were hungry for feedback and curious to know what images, in the hands of photographers, could be created. These first initiations was the beginning of many gatherings with photographers. It was the beginning of a community. Uh, ex Hut is is uh, they're lovely people, <laughs> sometimes the crazy people. When it started, I think uh, it's not uh, the Fujifilm, uh, you know, say, okay, we started, you know, ex-ambassador, uh, ex-photographer, the, the program. We, we didn't do that. It's more the photographers loved the uh, original X100, X1, and uh, I think it started happening uh, maybe seven years ago. Without us asking, uh, they became, I think they are almost a, a volunteer <laughs> ambassador. Yeah. We always invite ex-photographers coming to Omiya or we go to Tokyo and we have some discussion, the dinner. Through that communication, I think our staffs get some global feeling or emotion. Our relationship, I think, very, very close to each ex-photographers. Talk a lot, discuss a lot. So, sometimes we have some opinion, actually, we don't agree with the photographer, but it's, it's okay, it's a discussion. I was privileged enough to meet Masasan, who is the original designer of the X100, at a Fujifilm conference recently. And to some people it might seem a little bit odd having a camera signed. But for me it's the same as having a book signed or an album signed. It's a sign of respect for the designer, it's a sign of respect for the camera, and it's also a sign of thanks for being able to create these little cameras that have undoubtedly changed the way that I've progressed as a photographer and moved forward. I think it's fair to say that if Masasan had not designed this camera in the first place and Fujifilm had not had the confidence to bring it to market, I probably wouldn't be a photographer now and I certainly wouldn't have all of the pictures and the nostalgia that we will have of my own family in the future. I went to Japan last year for the first time in my life so just coming there from a street photographer's point of view was amazing. And to experience the hospitality of the people from Fujifilm was equally amazing. I've been talking to them for so long about coming to visit them. Again, on a very personal level, I'd like to think more than the business level. So I was there for that, for the meetings, but also socializing uh, afterwards. That's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking, <laughs> eating, singing karaoke, stuff like that. It's very, very fun. The ex-photographers community to me is something that I feel is very, very special to the Fujifilm brand. Uh, I know that all the other camera brands have ambassadors, but it has never had that kind of family feeling. My relationship with Fuji has really developed over the past five years. At the beginning, uh, a lot of the employees within Fujifilm were just employees to me. But now I do consider a lot of them as, as my friends, definitely. Also because I do this on a hobby basis, that's not my job. That I'm much more prone to want that, that personal relationship instead of the business relationship. Uh, so I try to involve myself personally with the people that I meet along this this journey with Fujifilm. I often hope that I get the same in return, and I often do. So we're not linked by blood, but it's as if we have something in common. So we use the same cameras, we use the same film simulations. When we talk about the same color language, you know, the same ergonomic language, it's something that we are all passionate about. And, and coming together is sort of like old friends coming together. Fujifilm has released a new camera, I would say every half a year. So that release means that ex-photographers like us, 
we'll be given a project um, to test out the cameras and to go out and, and take photographs and they use it in turn for their launch. I feel like, oh, it's my chance to do personal work. It's made me work harder. It's also sort of forced me to develop my personal work because I have a chance to. I've been energized, you know, knowing that some a huge organization is, is behind me and supporting that endeavor. Fujifilm understands photography and photographers. They know that we go through our ups and downs, our depressions, and they look at photography. They don't just make cameras. I know for sure, you know, they, they look at the guys from Magnum, the guys from Seven. They look at history, the famous photographers, and, and what it means to go out on the street. You know, what it means to be dark and depressive. Sometimes they amaze me because they never question what sort of content I would put out. I feel free to create my art. I'm not afraid of showing my true self or being judged or having to produce a picture-perfect landscape. I understand that they can accept a different kind of photography. So globally, I've been sent to workshops and to give lectures, to give talks about the work that I've done using Fujifilm cameras. That is where huge events like Photokina or Fujikina, where we get to, to know more about each other, more as friends. So that's where the relationship turns more into friendship than just a client-customer relationship. So I think it, it's that energy um, of their team that sort of affects me as an individual. It's a photographer's choice. We, we're just giving the tool for photographers to shoot photograph and also to show their emotion or passion to their audience. This is not a digital device, this is a camera. And we always think of some certain photographers or certain customers. Then we decide to create even the one by one bottom layout. We have a story how photographer use the camera. As a marketing word, we say street photography, but once ex-photographer shoots the photo, it's more than that. It's not just a word of the street photography. Ex-photographers using ex-proceeds told us what is important point to shoot, snap shooting. Also, they taught us how to use camera, what size is best, what operation way is the better compared to other camera. All of those, they taught us. There seems to be a lot of respect that goes both ways. A very, very important part of the, the way these cameras have evolved has been through discussions with photographers as opposed to accountants. That makes a big difference in how the entire line has been shaped. It's probably made a huge impact in terms of the speed at which it all evolved. I think having that feedback has shaped the entire line very, very quickly. 2011, the X100 came out, and now. <laughs> Everything that we have now, including the GFX100, I mean, it's just staggering how fast this ecosystem has basically been created out of thin air. I think that's obvious with the, the way that Fujifilm update their firmware very regularly. When you compare Fujifilm to other brands, it's very, very clear to photographers in the industry that there are people in Fujifilm that are passionate about photography and they listen to the people that use their cameras. So I've never really worked with a manufacturer. I would like a product, I would buy the product, and that was it. Working with Fujifilm is the first time I've ever enjoyed a product and then met the people who make the product. And now working with uh, Fuji for the past seven or eight years now, off and on, I met the guy who like, this is the guy who designed the camera and this is the person who works on the lenses and these two guys do the film simulation and they've been with the company for 40 years and they worked on the film side and now they're doing the digital and you, you sit down and you have a meal with them and you say, oh, I love this part about the camera. But, you know, I, they take so much feedback I've gone to them before and said, I wish this button did it this way instead of this way. And in the next camera, that button changed, you know. Um, I was at dinner last night with the, with the crew from Fuji, and I was like, okay, who's in charge of firmware? I was like, oh, he's in charge of firmware. So we go and we have a talk, and I'm like, there's this one little thing that I wish would happen. And then we all had a discussion, and it was all Japanese, like, hmm, hmm, oh, oh, Zaksan, Zaksan, uh, oh, very easy to do, very, uh, we look into, you know, like, like they listen, and then they have a little discussion, and they say, we're going to look into that. 
And it's cool to like meet someone and then six months later, it shows up as a menu item, you know? That's pretty awesome. I, I've, I've never had that kind of experience before. As I remember when we were in Tokyo in the headquarters, it was the first time we, we go up on that office. It's a closed door and there's some engineer came inside. They asked us what you don't like with the camera. It sounds weird because we normally read if, of what we like about the camera. So I guess they really need improvements from us. What's the next lens do you want? What types of body that you like? That's the thing with Fuji. They listen to photographers. Staying power is absolutely a part of evolution. Relationships are very much a part of evolution. If you can't be counted on to give good feedback, if you can't be counted on to deliver, then trust can't be built. And Fuji builds a lot of their products on trust. Very important thing is the feedback from ex-photographers because the feedback is a seed for implement a new product. So to make next product, I check all of the opinion from the photographers. So I categorize list and the visual image of the operability improvement. For every one model, I made around 10 operability improvement for each model. Firmware update is also important, but the hardware improvement is uh, more important for me to make next models. One input from our ex-photographers like you, for example, about the, the improvement like uh, autofocus or video capability. The another one is from technology side, like a uh, new device and a new uh, software improvement. Then I combine together, I make a new direction. A lot of information. <laughs> Beginning, our performance was not so good, so we made every kind of improvement. But now it's a bit changing, so we can propose more feature. In this spring, we will update the XT3 firmware, even just after you know six months from the launching. New autofocus algorithm, face detection, eye detection, improvement never stop. What engineers always thinking uh, make it better. The new models have new features. We can share even the you know all the models, even the less sales product. Yeah, we will share for the customer. That's a one of branding of the X series. Even the small sales camera, yeah, customer loves uh, our product. Yeah, we should respect them as well. So we should provide farm upgrade. I never in my wildest dream imagined that I would have this close of a relationship with a camera company that's on the other side of the planet. I never ever could have imagined that I could actually sit down with engineers and designers and actually give my input and see some of that come to fruition. I never thought I'd get here from there. People like us, we're hard to kill. We think the most, we see the most, and when we hurt, we bleed the most. If you're one of us, you'll recognize the intensity whether you're a photographer or a camera maker. Our work is not for us, it's for tomorrow. I really believe in the future of pictures and although wedding photography is where I make my income, a vast majority of the pictures I take are of my own family, personal pictures, street photography, the general things that are happening around me. And I, I have this a vision, if you like, of my, my kids and perhaps their own kids looking at these pictures in the future. And that's the power of those pictures, that nostalgia will really hit them then. You know, I have this firm belief that a mundane picture today will always become more powerful the older that picture gets. Well, I was not from a particular family where there was a camera, you know, there wasn't cameras kicking around all the time. And really the only pictures we have from my own childhood are Christmas, on holidays, that kind of thing. And when I look at those pictures now, I now understand the power of the candid picture. It's the ones at Christmas opening the wrapping paper, all of that kind of stuff. They're the ones that when I look at those pictures now, they take me instantly back to those moments in time. And I've been to weddings where I have seen the most lavish 
absolute lavish things happen. Uh, I've been to weddings in chateaus in France where every single one of the guests was flown in from America by the clients and hundreds of thousands of euros spent on these weddings. But equally I've been to weddings where it's been upstairs in a pub in Camden and it's very low cost wedding but the people are just as happy, just as fun and more importantly just as exciting for me to photograph those as it is to photograph the high end weddings. I think in the 10 years that I've been photographing weddings, things have uh, been very good for me. Uh, I've, I've had incredible times, I've had some very lucky breaks, I've photographed celebrity weddings, I've had the opportunity to travel, I've been to Argentina, I've been to Japan, I've been to North America, I've been all over Europe and it often beggars belief with me that people will sit there and listen to me talk about my work. How on earth has this happened? You know, when I left school, I was going off to do IT and be a computer programmer, you know, and, and here I am now, I've just been to the photography show and there was 400 people, you know, listening to me talk about my work. The biggest achievement, I think, was living out in the desert and working on a project for eight years called Conversations with the Mob. So it was in Western Australia, living with the Māori Aboriginal people. I was working for the Australian newspaper at the time. I had been working for Reuters, international news agency. And then I was working for the Australian, in, based in Perth. And I was flying in all around the place, covering national stories and international stories. In the media, we fly in all the time and then we fly out. Whatever story we do, we have to cover what's happening then and we don't ever look in depth in it. So I gave up the comfortable bed, the secure income, and drove to the desert, which I thought for six months, but I ended up living full time nearly for three years with them. And after that, it was, overall, it was an eight year project. And it wasn't just photo taking. I was looking after sick people. I was in the hospitals. It was all at my own expense. No one paid for it. And that leaves a long-lasting um, impact on life because it means that I don't own a home. The only thing I own is a car, but I have had enormous experiences. So it, to me, it was never about the money. It's about making a difference. All you have to do is do what feels right and put it out there. While I'm photographing, I try not to involve myself, but if it, if it means that something or somebody needs help while I'm doing that and I'm able to do it, then I'm, I use my abilities. So it's not, it's not, again, it's not separate, it's all part of the whole. Photography to me is a vehicle to open doors and windows to worlds that not everyone else gets to see. People pay attention and they invite, invite you in and they trust you, which comes with an enormous sense of responsibility. Who is Patrick Laroque? That's like the hardest question you could ever ask. I kind of hate categories. So I do some commercial photography. I also do portraiture. I do some editorial stuff. I write. I get to, to speak to photographers as well uh, and do talks and, uh, and, and just think about photography and do my own thing as well. When, when I decided to, to, to switch full-time to photography, I was actually doing soundtracks and music in a more professional way and actually earning money from it. Uh, I just felt like something I had to do. Yeah, so I jumped in. It's just, it was just physical, basically. Like I would see the camera and I had to pick up the camera. And I had to shoot a couple of shots in the morning and then, I, and then it was just like this, this really strong pull to actually and it didn't matter, I was, it wasn't the subject that was driving me, it was just the idea of, of connecting with what was around me through that device. There's this quote, what, what is it? There's this, Richard Avedon has this quote that I think sums it up perfectly. He says, um, if a day goes by without anything photographic, in, in, you know, it's like something's missing, like, like not eating or not drinking or whatever, which is, that's not the exact quote, but that's the gist of it. And that's pretty much it, actually. Uh, it, it's a very personal thing. It's, it's just about expressing whatever needs to be expressed. I'm not a full-time photographer. I'm a full-time doctor, but I think if I count the hours, I might be closing in on becoming 
a full-time photographer because I spend a lot of time doing it. At the beginning, I defined myself as a street photographer, but I, I think I quickly learned that that was quite a limiting term for me for what I do photographically since I, I, don't, really, I don't really feel that I should let a genre define what kind of photographer I am. I became the product photographer for Fujifilm by shooting actually the X70s series um, when, when that launched. Um, I was one of the two or three testers of it and I shot some images of it. And when I shot, sent my sample images to Fujifilm, I sent the product shots with it and they liked it and now they've been using it ever since. It was, it was just that spring uh, after the X70 had launched. Um, they shipped over all of the products and they had a big web design refresh thing. And um, so they, they sent over all the products and wanted me to photograph each and every one of it uh, for the website, uh, for the banner images. Um, and ever since they've kept that kind of styling that I provided them with because my product images are always shot on a very dark surface. Uh, so they have like a unique look to them uh, that they caught on to and, and used. I think my product photography is, is very personal in that I look at the products as little persons. It sounds weird, but I, I look at them as little personalities. So when I photograph them, I try to pull out the personalities. Um, so, for instance, if I shoot a, a fun little product, I'll try to do it in a fun, fun way. And if I shoot like the bigger cameras, the more muscular cameras, I would choose other camera angles to best bring out that in them. So that's, that could be a reason why. I don't think I could live a single day without photography anymore. If I were to set back time for years, I probably could, um, but it's become such an integral part of me now that I carry my camera with me everywhere. I carry it with me when I go outside in our own garden. I sometimes bring it to the toilet. I'm not doing anything with the camera when I'm in the toilet, but I'm, I'm bringing it just because it's an integral part of me, like wearing a wristwatch. So I wear the camera all the time. If you can see, I've... I've got wonder lost in my blood. I am a officially a photographer for a organization called Preemptive Love Coalition. I've just hit my five month mark, or five and a bit month mark in Iraq. So my organization serves uh, refugees and uh, displaced Iraqis. There are well over a million displaced Iraqis in, in Iraq right now. We do emergency aid because that's always critical when war is going on. At this point, we are also doing a lot of community building. I come from a street photography background, so it's a, it's a very, very different way of working. There is none of this stealth thing. We ask for permission always, respect. You ask and you don't take unless it's given. I think it's, it's, it's confronting seeing war, which for me, until I moved to Iraq, has always been something that happened on the other side of a screen and I'm seeing its effects, if not the war itself, but its effects firsthand. And that makes you rethink a lot of your life. Many years ago, I, I took a workshop, a Magnum workshop with Antoine Degata. During that workshop, there were 12 of us in his class and he sat with each person and asked them, why do you photograph? And he would not let you go until you gave him an answer that he felt it was your truth. Anybody, anybody can put work out into the world. Good, bad, ugly, whatever. What I put out into the world is, is just a particular way I see the world. It's a particular way I feel of the world. And it's a voice, it's a mode of expression, but importantly, it's also being seen. Somebody who's a minority in most parts of the world, particularly where photography is prevalent. Being seen and having the, your work validated by others who will say, thank you for sharing. I would not have known this about Singapore, about Kurdistan, about Denmark, about wherever I've been, if not for your pictures. I arrived to the Gamma Agency in uh, 82, and I stayed to Gamma Agency uh, until 90. I took very quickly the plane everywhere in the world. It was crazy time. It was a golden age of photojournalism. It was marvelous. Uh, we were always just a dozen of photographers to make 
everything what's happening in the world. I was always in assignment for Time magazine, for Newsweek, for Life magazine, uh, for Stern magazine in Germany, or for the Sunday Times magazine in London, or Paris Match, or Figaro magazine in France. So it was, um, we were kings, and it was a marvelous time. What is my brain about all this war I've covered? Do you think you can come back uh, safely of a war? Uh, nobody can come back safely. Nobody. You keep all the trouble in your head and in your stomach, and you must live with that. But, you know, nobody obliged me to go, so I have no complaint. If I have trouble in my brain, that's my problem. I don't have to say this is the fault of a magazine or someone. Or, no, no, it's me who decide to go. It's me who was there for my own, my own volunteers. On the spot, yeah, a few times I totally uh, lost my brain, yeah. But, but they are here, but I don't want to let them make me more crazy than I am. I don't think about the trouble I saw on the field, okay? Chechnya, Afghanistan, or, or wherever, anywhere. My trouble in my head now, since years and years, it's about my kids. I'm afraid about them, about if they could die. So that's the bad, uh, the bad side about covering war. It's a transposition, in fact. It's uh, about uh, what I saw, what I lived, and uh, it's on my kids. So, well, everything goes, goes well. I'm happy for that. But every day I have a, like a flash. And so I put it off very quickly because I know that's not real. But well, so, it's okay, look, I'm smiling. I really love the photography. Even if that's now a very difficult period for the photographer. Digital arrived 20 years ago and it gives the possibility to everybody to do photography, you know. And uh, somewhere that's marvelous. It's wonderful because uh, you can be on the other side of the world. You can send the pictures by internet or you can be in direct with uh, your family or could be in the magazine on a sofa, you know. The bad side is, the problem is, it's coming like a consumerism. They do, they shoot a lot because it's free, you know, you can make a thousand of pictures. And the problem is not thousands of pictures where it's interesting. What is interesting? This is the one, the picture. When I was young in the, in the 60s, People in the family, you make some uh, pictures. And on the same roll of 36 views, and remember, we get 24 views, and also 12 views on the film, you know? And uh, on this film, you could have all year long, the anniversary, the birthday, the holidays, Christmas. On the same uh, film, on 36 views, you have all year long, and every picture were good, because people take care about what they did, you know? And that's the problem of today, it's people with the digital, they don't take care. They just push on the button. About photography, it's, uh, I love it so much that for me, this is an investment and much more. It's an engagement, engagement of my life, my family, of course, but about this work, this is very, very important. It's, it's not just to do photography and uh, forget it. No, no, no. It's a work of every day. It's a work of my life. For almost six years, I was able to go around the Philippines from north all the way down south to Mindanao. I enjoy my days with Fujifilm because I got to travel, seeing more of our country, to learn more of our culture and meeting new people. I was so passionate about it. I was so happy with the camera and maybe I just want to help the Fuji. If you're going to go back in the history of photography in the Philippines, everybody goes to wedding because where the money is. Street photography exists already. Now it's famous because Fuji came and I was there as well. We have so many events for street than compared to any other genre. I started a photo walk with Fujifilm. My Edison came. It's my first time to see an expat on street with me. And he even treat us for lunch. That's the start of my photo walk journey with Fujifilm. It came bigger and bigger. Now we're coming up with a nationwide photo walk for hundreds and thousands of participants already. We started with just, you can count by hands. 
nationwide, I think we're close to 4,000 already. They only have X100 and only have X Pro with one lens or even two lenses. So nothing more, nothing less. We just walk and shoot. They're all enthusiasts, not even uh, a professional. And that's why Meda is so happy to see them and they go on their own way just to meet us. It's so family thing. It's not really like a, a brand and a user thing. It's really like a family thing. That's why I think that's the Fuji Lab that I'm telling you. I give, yes, I give so much for that photo walk. So much for my time, I guess, for the love of photography, for the love of sharing, I guess. I'm happy with somebody will ask me, Sir Romel, thank you, I learned something. So it's very fulfilling for me as a photographer, I guess. The bulk of my work has got to do with people. I started out as a newspaper journalist um, because I constantly had to deal with people who were called underprivileged or I find myself drawn towards people in a need of a voice, people who sort of gone under, people caught in between. That's not statistical, things that you can't find on the surface. So I'm always sort of constantly trying to go inside of what um, it means to a person um, in their heart and in their mind. So in a way, I, I guess you can say that my photography is kind of on an emotional level. Um, I mean, happiness or sadness is an, it's a universal language. Um, and it tries to understand um, the environments um, that each one of us live in regardless of where we are in the world. Photography is everything and nothing to me. I need it in order to stay alive in a way that even without a camera, nothing can stop me from seeing the moments, composing the photos, keeping my thoughts beautiful. Photography is a gift and I'm responsible to share the stories entrusted to me. In the same way, a camera creator must have conviction about photography. He has been entrusted with the power to influence photography through cameras. My first hobby was uh, photography. So it was uh, back in probably 1980 uh, when I went to uh, junior high school. I was uh, 13 years old, I think. And at that time, uh, uh, my father uh, told me Okay, now you pass the exam, so what do you want? Uh, I want a camera. My father generously uh, bought me the Nikon SLR. My uh, pocket money was not the enough, so with my friend of the junior high school, I uh, bought a uh, uh, long roll for him, and uh, we cut and uh, put into the canister, and uh, we shared, I, we managed to save our money. Ten years later, I joined Fujifilm. My first job was exporting a photographic film all over the world. That was uh, 1991. So 28 years the past, and, but I'm still in charge with the photography and the cameras. Fortunately or unfortunately, I stay <laughs> still in the photographic business. I lived in the, the UK seven and a half years. Uh, my daughter was uh, two years until the nine years old. So oh, I took a lot of pictures. Uh, it was before the digital cameras. So we, I still keep a lot of, a lot of films and uh, negatives on the print. They couldn't uh, take enough pictures uh, after I came back to Japan. Mm, so I still looking for some opportunities to take my daughter's picture before uh, she gets married, I hope. Things were less rosy a decade ago. The rapid decline in photographic film demand from 2005 to 2010 meant Fujifilm lost almost 60% of its core business. There was an urgency for massive reforms and diversification to other businesses to save the company from death. Bold and courageous moves were necessary. The camera department was halved. 10 years ago, the team was not so good, always like a bit fighting. Well, our sales is very tough because so we don't have enough to line up at that time. Unfortunately, so some of our camera's performance, especially autofocus, uh, is not so enough for high-end users. 
2012, we had a the restructuring. We had a separate product planning team and a product marketing team uh, the co combined. The situation is very, very serious. The sale is down. So we, we become discussing more. We, we shared the th thinking together more deeply. So day by day, step by step, we know each other. So now we have a very good relationship, just like one strong team. It's been almost a year in the making. Will the design work? Will the public find affinity, instinct, decisions, the power of thinking without thinking? Let's remember that as a company culture, Fujifilm is no stranger to taking risks. If we ask 10 photographers or 10 customers, we have 10 different opinions. So how to get all the opinion into one camera? It's, it's quite difficult. Sometimes, rather than just you know, asking the customers, sometimes you know, we have to make a decision. So this is the way that our Expro series should go. I think that this uh, LCD is a really classic example. If we keep asking, we couldn't reach to LCD solution. I think that this is a weakness or a, the passion and the challenge for new things. You are not here for just make pictures. No, 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 no. This is photography. You need Expo 3, you must change. The line is very nice, but you must also say, wow, block things and uh, disturb people. It's not, it's like my photography. I'm not here for to make pleasure to people. I'm not a nice photographer. I'm here for the people ask them questions about the photography, about what they see, about what's happening there. I'm not here for you like my picture. I'm here for you ask you question about Whoa, what's happening there? And why? Why they do that? But I don't want to say that my picture will change the world. Definitely, I know that it will not change. But it's good that people ask them questions and how we can perhaps do something else and to change or to help or disturb. So this new camera must dis disturb us. <laughs> when I pick it up, I start to look for the image on the back and then you realise you can't and it's putting the brain back into that, that space of actually really utilising your ability as a photographer and not being able to see what you're doing unless you really want to. If you're new to photography, you will learn from the camera. But if you're old to photography, you will love this camera. It's very nostalgic, it's very analog type. It's like the way I use it is the way like I'm using a film. Very traditional, very analog. Fuji's, they call it it's the camera with a soul. For me personally, I've seen the whole developmental journey of the Expo 3. So I've seen the struggles of the team. Um, and the history, the previous prototypes that they've put out that haven't gone through, and all the questions they've asked and how hard they've pushed themselves, um, you know, within this timeline to have this product. So it's not just the embodiment, it's not just having a camera, it's, this is, uh, you know, taking around my friends with me, this Fujifilm family, this spirit, you know, this group of people who have such drive and passion is, is different when you, when you own something like that. It's not an accident. It's a deliberate design. It's gone through debate through the eyes of professional photographers and also purists, like people who love photography and saying this is what I want to see in a camera, this is how we want to feel about a camera. And, you know, like Kunio, Kunio who was pushing certain elements. There's a whole element of punk rockiness of Kunio, the product manager that's gone into this camera. I can literally see his character coming out through here. Oh, there's that individualism. Let's cover the flip screen. It's not, let's bring back the true essence of photography. We've gone through these debates for months and here it is. Um, here it is in our hands. Find a product. Product planning does not need democracy. So mm. sometimes uh, we become pretty selfish person. Mm. So listen, listen, listen. Every, every, every time we listen, mm. voices, requests, but uh, later we ignore. Mm. Ninety-nine yeah. percent we ignore the voices. What I want to make is uh, what photography want to make. I want to make the great camera which 
can shoot a great photography. Great photography taken by great photographer. My product can be best friend to you. I don't know he can do, but he can be closest friend. Yes, buddy. What truly matters, what I value the most, is to make honest photographs. Our lives are limited, but our perspectives through photos can live beyond. This is not about endorsement, approvals, or likes. This is not a game. This is you and I laying claim to our existence.